the attention to detail. It's what defines a valued quality product. The human touch was once expected in society, yet today it's a luxury. And that's what this is. An institution with almost 100 years of history and with an enduring vision which values performance and innovation just as much as luxury. It's the perfect harmony of modern systems and technology interacting with generations of human skill. This is a look at how a legendary brand continues its life into the next century. This is Inside Bentley. So you've got a block here. Yep. Where does this block come from? So this block comes in to us from logistics, from our logistics, which is sent in from the suppliers, uh, which is based in Telford. How many motors are you building every day? We're at the moment building five a day. Uh, so we'll get through, depending on if they send four in a stillage, you know, one, one, one day, two the next day, maybe. And, and how many people are actually working on each one of these uh, uh, motors? Actually, on the engine itself, there's, there's six processes so there should be six individuals working. We take the block out of the, out of the stillage, we attach it to a build fixture. We, well, what Andy's doing at the moment, he takes out the, the main bearing caps. On this station we also fit the camshaft and the cam timing gear. And then Andy's going to move this forward, fit a few other ancillaries such as water pump, uh, front cover, and then send it up to pistons. His pistons get built for him by the sub-assembly job and Andy will also fit the pistons. All that's done within his ATM in attack time. He, we have scanning, uh, we have barcodes on the block and, and, the, and the shaft, which tells him what bearings, because each bearing's colour-coded for size. So depending on how these have been machined, we have a size tolerance. So this tells Andy what bearings to choose and put in which were. Cool. It's quite clever, right? Yeah. Other, other than it's getting a chart and working things out, it's just done on barcodes straightforward for production. So out of uh, you know the whole process, it's all pretty much done by hand at this point, except minus the yeah, tooling. Yeah, it's all, all, all done by hand. Yeah. There's no automation in the whole process. It's every person is putting their hands on it, putting the pieces in. So this is how Andy finishes now. So he's finished this and he's fitted the, fitted the got the block, fit the front cover. He's got his, uh, got his shaft in, uh, the, the cam shafts in you can see as well. He's put the rear plate on and also then fitted the pistons. So this is all ready then for the, for the flex plate, which is the, uh, your, cr your crank gear, if you like, to go on, flywheel. That gets fitted here, as well as the, the tappets. You know, the, the tappets, these are, these are the push rods sitting, and these also have the solenoids in, which shut the, four, the eight cylinders down to four cylinders, so we can run like in, in uh, half engine mode. So these get fitted here as well. It also fits the sump, uh, puts its first bit of oil in, and then sends it onto the balance machine. So every engine gets balanced. It's balanced, uh, I think we use three grams at the pulley end and two grams at the flywheel end. So depending on how well these have been machined from supplier to us within the tolerance, depends on how much weight we have to take off or add to get it. It's just fine tuning. We just fine tune the engine. So where does the weight go? I know, like for example. Yeah. Like so, so we have the flywheel on the back end. Okay. So when this is on the back, we have the little holes, and we, we add rivets to that. Each rivet weighs a gram, and then if we need more than a gram, say 1.2 grams, we have washes that weigh 0.2 grams, 0.3 grams. It's all weighed out and fitted. And then, so we have to add to the rear, but take off the front. Now we have the pulleys that we fit on the front, which are the, the mass damper pulleys, and they have to be drilled to take weight off. So we have a chart to say, if we need to take, say, three grams off, we might have to drill a four mil hole. And, we, and, and that's all attached to the machine. So, cool. so like, like a wheel weight, you're adding lead, but this, it's much more refined than that. Yeah, you have to be more, more, yeah, more, yeah, more... Yeah, a lot more refined than that, yeah. So this is the next stage in the build now. So it's come off the balancer. These guys then attach the cylinder heads, attach the intake manifolds, uh, they're putting the rocker shafts on. Now these are all sub-assembled in-house as well by our sub-assembly team. Uh, we then s try and seal the engine up by putting the rocker covers on and... Uh, we do a fuel 
put, put the fuel rail on and, t and pressure test that as well to make sure we've got no leaks, obviously, on the fuel system. So the engine is then passed down to the next station. This is a, mainly like the loom fit station and the turbo fit. So you've got your, your big main loom, which attaches to all your injectors, your HT leads, your everything basically that needs an electrical connection on is connected on this station, including the CDA. Uh, and then all the secondary air intake systems fitted, as well as the manifold, t exhaust manifolds and turbos. Uh, also fits a lot of the ancillary pumps at the front, so you've got your compressor for your air conditioning, your power steering, and your thermostat housing as well. So quite a lot of bits of fiddly bits start fitting now. You've got all the big chunks, and then now we've got on the 88 minutes worth of small fiddly parts and that. Cool. Yeah, so this is, this is where we, so, so we finished the engine off on the last station by fitting the charge air coolers onto the top. We fit the belt, alternator, all your turbo uh, dump valves, your turbo intake system, your oil cooler. The last bit of the oil gets put in this takes like 10 and a half litres of oil in this engine here. Yeah. Uh, and the exhaust down six, which catalyst either side is all fitted and then checked off at the end before this then gets ready to go on to the hot test cells where we have to rig it up. So each, each engine, after it's finished the CP4 line, gets uh, tested on hot test. It's run for around about 20 minutes for a series of tests. Put, puts load on it uh, and tests like the, the cam phase in, as well as making sure everything's working right. We randomly select this engine as well, so we don't specifically say, oh, that'll be the audit engine. So we just say, right, we've got an engine. That goes then over to the audit boys. We test it first. It then gets put on an eight hour endurance test. Uh, before it's stripped down, right the way down, to every piece out and they inspect each of them pieces, make sure that we've got normality wear on the bearings uh, and nothing else is missed off during our production or from suppliers. So. And how often is that? That's one in every hundred engines, around about every four weeks. Yeah, so because everybody is involved in building this car, basically, in this engine, uh, it, it's, we find the best way is to just hand a list of names to the guys who print it on the line. They have the etching machine out on the line and uh, they, they randomly select from there somebody, somebody's name from the engine department to go on that. Got it. So, because it's quite hard to say, I built that engine, whereas, uh, yeah, I built a part of that engine. That's the way it is.